Just a quick update on the Monkey Ward Gilson tractor. Haven't had much time to work on it this week because work has been keeping me busy late and it's been raining like heck. And right now this thing's outside under a blue tarp. But um, I was able to identify, make, model, and number. And for anyone that's not totally familiar with these old Briggs and Stratton engines, out here on the fan shroud, <coughs> stamped in the metal. Wait, where are we? Get the camera correct. Stamped here in the metal, and it's very, very hard to see. I ended up having to hit it with the real fine steel wool and then shine a light on it sideways to get the imprints to come out. You can get the make, model, and type for the engine. And I was able to determine that it was a 16 horse or a 32 cc Briggs and Stratton uh, made August 2nd, 1973. So it's an old tractor, old engine. And what else I was able to determine? And maybe this will save someone that has one of these old engines and can't get the battery to charge. One of the problems that the previous owner told me was that he had problems with it charging the battery. Now, the uh, initially we tested, the only two wires that are coming out of the engine is a white wire here, let me get that pad out of the way, and a red wire here. Um, that's it. That's the only wiring that comes out of this thing. And you had this little module here. Well, when we first hooked up the battery, and I didn't get it on video because I didn't think it'd be that exciting, but I was wrong. Um, there's the module that sets over here, which is this guy right here. Now this is what it did. It it smoked itself. It turned to charcoal and smoked itself really bad. And I, we figured that uh, the charging system was bad on this. Put a tester to it. Couldn't get any voltage when it was running. You've got a, you have three pins here coming out of this Molex plug, and I wasn't getting any voltage out of here um, either. Of these wires. So I did a little internet research, and if this could save somebody a couple hours of research, um, all my knowledge I'll pass on to you. These are. This particular engine has a dual alternator. Um, this feed here, this white lead, is considered your light lead. It's your white lighting wire. That is AC. And that's what, when I was testing it with my voltage tester, my electronic voltage tester, I was checking for direct current. I didn't even dawn on me till way later that maybe it was producing AC and my meter, if it's not clicked to AC, won't read it. So that's a five amp, that white lead is a five amp AC 12 volt out. They use that to charge, or not to charge, excuse me, they use that to run the lighting, the headlights and the tail light. It's an independent alternator from the charging alternator. The red lead that comes out is a 3 amp red charging wire. At this part of the wire, it's a direct current. This is a 7.5 amp fuse. When we found it, it had a 15 amp in there. Um, but this is DC. The reason why this is DC going back to this exploded part this is actually a bridge rectifier <laughs> rectifier um, and it was it had probably shorted out one of the diodes probably went bad and shorted out and that's what grenaded this whole little unit he said unit and it sits right here in this plug this molex plug for your information like i said if this will save you hours of internet searching as as i had to do the two bottom pins are your hot and your common coming out of the charging alternator the hot and the common lead goes through a series of diodes here. There are four diodes. You can internet search what a bridge rectifier is, and, and you can see. Um, and it rectifies, basically it takes the AC coming out of here, it changes it over to a direct current or a DC, and the output is this top pin. This top pin is directly connected with this red lead here. That's why this is DC. So AC on the two bottom pins, 12 volt AC, goes through a bridge rectifier, goes back in through this top pin and makes that your your DC makes that your DC for your charging. And of course, me being the ever frugal person that I am, figured uh, what the heck, I'll just make my own bridge rectifier. Well, actually, I'm going to have my shop dummy make the bridge rectifier. I have diodes and I have these four pin Molex plugs because uh, I did a lot of electrical work custom electrical work in the past and I still have a lot of parts laying around and pieces and stuff so I'm gonna have shop dummy do that because he's a little better at the oops he's a little better at the electronic stuff I mean let's face it my wife just keeps me around for my rugged good looks and my strong back and you know it's a lot of work being arm candy 
So I'll let him build that and I'll get a video of that being built with the four diodes. We'll plug it back into here. I'll put this uh, inspection cover or this uh, protective cover back over that to protect it and it's done. And then I'll rewire it because this wiring's hash. Um, it's got all kinds of weird stuff in here. So when we were running it before, we had actually bypassed all this wiring. I think I showed you this before. He's got wire nuts and some kind of cloth covered wire. I don't know what the hell's going on here. So that's all gonna come out. It's gonna get a custom wiring harness with stuff I have. I have tons of wire and connectors and stuff. That'll make it good. So there you have it. That's your charging system for your vintage 1973 16 horse single cylinder Briggs and Stratton. And uh, I got all kinds of fun plans for this. Custom exhaust, gonna build a plow for the front, um, turn that roto tiller actually into a flail mower. I don't need a tiller, but I sure could use a flail mower. So, thanks for watching.